Hi and welcome back. Continuing on my autumn theme, I'm going to be painting this late autumn scene um, with a pheasant and trees that have lost just about all their leaves um, with just the undergrowth below. It's going to be a very loose painting and I'm using Milford 100% cotton cold pressed watercolour paper. It's 11 inches by 15 inches or 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorator's masking tape and my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees because I like to have a nice flow for my water. I've painted out my pheasant with Pebeo masking fluid um, and that will preserve the white of the paper there so that I can make sure that when I paint my pheasant the colours um, are nice and fresh. Um, I'm wetting the sky all over and most of the land area and introducing a gloomy overcast sky made from indigo, Payne's grey and burnt umber. I'm using horizontal sweeps with my large Pro Art um, Harky brush um, and then introducing thicker, richer colour into the wet wash so that it sort of di uh, diffuses but mostly stays there still to start up my um, tree line or just below the tree line to start off a sort of undergrowth and tangle of kind of um, dead autumn sort of plants and brambles and that sort of thing. And this is mostly indigo and burnt umber and you can see because the paint's thicker than the, the, than the sky wash the paint is staying there it's sort of being drawn onto the paper and whilst it's softly diffusing it's still holding its own and not drifting down the page too much. And with some pale washes across the foreground using the same colour as the sky um, I can begin to develop a foreground that's kind of quite blurry and indistinct just putting in a bit of detail with very rich paint indigo and burnt umber again on the tips of my brush you can see I'm running that across the foreground and under the tree line um, I can then get a clean damp small squirrel mop brush and I can soften back um, but still leave a nice rich edge of colour which just suggests in this loose painting some sort of foreground grasses and adds a bit more um, oomph and tone to the area underneath the trees. You can see that just gently softening back here and there um, helps to pull these brush marks together. Now taking the corner of a plastic store card or you could use the end of a paintbrush, your fingernail or a palette knife, I'm etching through the paint just to produce um, a line of sort of faint distant trees and branches in that hedgerow. Um, I shall paint them in more firmly uh, once the paint is dry. I'm now going to step away from the painting and leave it to dry completely and come back and continue. So here's the painting fully dry. It's a little bit darker than this, but as always, the sun's coming through my studio windows um, quite brightly and just washing the colours out a little bit. But I'll show you the true colour of the painting at the end. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is paint in my um, mid-ground trees. Now here's the first batch that I painted. Um, my hand was very much covering the painting, so I didn't show it but I'll see if I can show you now. Um, my camera angle isn't the greatest in this setup, but I'm afraid it's the only setup I've got for painting at the moment. So I'm using my small calligraphy brush and I'm going over my penciled in trees from the um, beginning sketch. But I'm not following them religiously, I'm just intuitively putting in the branches, trying to get this to look like a wild hedgerow rather than a sort of manicured hedge, if you see what I mean. Changing up the types of trees and the way they grow. Uh, these are obviously just small hedgerow trees, um, closer to bushes, really. Um, and I just want to get that nice suggestion of late autumn, early winter trees um, as a backdrop for the pheasant really, because it's the pheasant that's going to be the focal point here, hopefully. But the trees should make a really nice backdrop. The small calligraphy brush is really useful for this. Um, 
And as the paint runs out on the brush, you get smaller, finer and fainter branches so that you can get a good amount of variety to the weight and the types of lines that you use for this, which is what helps to build up a sort of convincing tree line. And now um, going in with a calligraphy brush again, but this time sort of dotting and dashing and sort of scribbling a bit, just to introduce the ivy and other sorts of climbing plants that are just sort of growing up the trunks of these sort of small hedgerow trees and just little bits of plants and maybe dead brambles, that sort of thing. Um, and what this is doing is also, not only is it adding the suggested detail, it's adding in some darker tones and it's linking the ground line, if you see what I mean. It's linking everything together to bring some sort of tonal harmony or unity to the painting. So I'm swapping here from indigo to Payne's grey and then to a bit of burnt sienna, maybe a bit of burnt umber. Again, keeping a little bit of variety, which just keeps this sort of dull, gloomy scene um, a little bit more interesting and captivating. So after putting in just a few little dead leaves on some of the um, branches of the trees, I have removed the masking fluid. And again, using my fine calligraphy brush, I'm going to paint the pheasant. Now, um, I'm using an old painting of mine as a model for the pheasant. And for that, I used a photograph from Pixabay, which I'm afraid I can't find now. But if you go on somewhere like Pixabay or Pexels, the royalty free photograph sites, and type in the search bar for pheasants, you'll find lots of really nice pheasants that you can actually copy and put in as much detail as you like. So I'm going to be focusing on keeping the pheasant looking loose so it's harmonious with the rest of the painting and using exactly the same colours but with a couple of additions at the end. Um, so I'm using the indigo and the paint's grey to get some nice shadows in and then leaving a few little bits of unpainted paper, little scraps here and there to add to the sort of feathery effect. I'm just going to be carefully and softly washing in um, burnt sienna and burnt umber across the wing area. As I'm painting this with um, wet paint onto a dry painting, there's no rush, so I'm taking my time to make sure that I don't overdo it. And I'm sort of washing my brush out and softening up some of the darker paint and what's happening is I'm creating a sort of wet in wet environment across the pheasant so I can drop in different colours. And of course, with my board at 45 degrees, those colours will sort of drift towards the bottom of the pheasant where the pheasant is mostly in shadow. So this is what I mean when I say that gravity will help me paint. It doesn't just help paint with skies. It helps paint with shadows. If you have your board at a slight angle, then the paint will naturally deepen and darken up around the base and if it gets too dark you can just take a clean damp brush and just touch it to the paper and you will remove the excess paint from there. Now for the most important part of the pheasant I'm just putting a little line in across the top of his head a little flick for, for a feather on the, the right side um, and then I'm going to um, introduce my different colours. These lovely pheasants have bright red faces and um, bright blue collars so I'm going to use French vermilion for the face and um, cobalt turquoise for his blue collar and even though it's only a small amount of these colours I'm hoping they'll just draw the eye towards the pheasant. Once his little face is dry then I will sharpen up the beak and um, put in a little white beady eye as well. But I want to be careful not to overdo this. I want just enough detail um, to suggest the pheasant rather than painting every single feather, if you see what I mean. 
So just some little stripes on his very handsome tail feathers. Which of course are one of the most distinctive features of this beautiful bird. So I'm nearly done now. I just need a shadow and it's not going to be a harsh shadow because this is a gloomy day without any sort of direct sunlight. So there's not much in the way of shadows. So I'm going to put my shadow in with indigo and Payne's grey underneath the pheasant. And then once I've established its position, I'll get my clean, damp squirrel mop brush and soften the shadow back. So it literally is just bedding, um, bedding the, the pheasant into the ground, if you see what I mean, and not too overtly a strong shadow, a sort of a diffused shadow, I suppose. And then finally, once the pheasant's face is completely dry, then I can um, put in a little white eye with some white gouache paint. So I'm going to zoom you in and um, using a very fine calligraphy brush, I'm literally going to just put in a dot. And then maybe a little tiny bit on the beak, a little tiny bit of shadow maybe, and deepen up any tones in the shadows of the bird that I need to. And now um, I think I'm pretty much finished. So as always, removing the tape is always a really nice moment. It's one of my favourite parts of a painting. It's where you can sort of see the painting with fresh eyes, almost as if it was framed and mounted. And here it is against a clean board. And this is a slightly better... Um, it's, it's been taken in a slightly better light, so the colours are sort of mo much more true to the way that they are, rather than being bleached out by my studio um, sunny windows. So if we just zoom in again, then I'm hoping you can see that the very loose brushwork is, is, quite, is quite minimal, really, and that focusing on um, soft and hard or lost and found edges has given me that sort of misty look, but also that quite stark look of the late autumn, early winter trees. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and remember, you don't have to use the gloomy colours that I so love. Um, you can change it up and use any colour palette you like. Um, obviously, you could go for more like local colours, including some sort of greens and some of the turning leaves, that sort of thing, and maybe uh, brighten up your pheasant a little bit. Um, but begin to make your own choices um, of the sort of kinds of colours that you like will really help you to begin to progress and to develop your own personal style and colour palette. Um, please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and if you're not al already subscribed please consider subscribing as it really helps with my reach with the YouTube algorithm. Um, and thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.